Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, the best place to learn about expat life, intercultural skills and business abroad. Today I'm going to answer 10 burning questions about Saudi Arabia, the questions you always wanted to ask but didn't know who to ask. Stick around to find out what you always wanted to know about Saudi Arabia. First of all, I should mention that I was lucky enough to live in Saudi Arabia for four years, which were some of the best years of my life, both professionally and personally. Secondly, it's my duty to educate you, my audience members, on the real Saudi Arabia. Most or all of what you hear in the news is either very out of date, extremely negative or simply untrue. Contrary to the vast misperceptions out there, Saudi is a very safe country, which is open to and accepting of expats and has among the most hospitable people in the world. If you have never considered this as a destination for work or for tourism, now is the time. Saudi has gone through some amazing and unforeseen changes in the last six years due to the Vision 2030, which is the government's plan to diversify the economy away from dependence on oil revenues. Many sectors are developing at breakneck speed and the result is plenty of opportunities. Now is one of the most exciting times in history to visit the kingdom or even spend some years working there, since it currently offers some of the highest salaries in the world for expats. But far beyond the economic benefits are the wonderful experiences you will have and the lifelong memories that you will create while living there. Now on to the questions. Number one. What should I wear? Generally speaking, for both men and women, Saudis prefer a conservative and formal style of dress in the office. General rules for women are to wear high neck shirts, long sleeves, loose fitting clothes, skirts below the knee, no transparent clothes, and no collarbone or shoulders exposed. Saudi women usually wear the abaya or long gown which is often black but can also be other colors and then various forms of head covers, the hijab which covers the head and some also wear the niqab which also covers the face. If you are a woman and you're wondering if you have to wear an abaya, the answer is no. The Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman declared in 2018 that it is no longer necessary to wear an abaya. However, many women in Saudi still wear it. It's a matter of culture and tradition. In fact, many women still also wear the hijab and some even still wear the niqab. If you ask me if I wear an abaya when I'm in Saudi Arabia, the answer is yes. I always wear an abaya when I'm in public. Personally, I love the abaya. I find it to be elegant, beautiful, and comfortable. Moreover, I feel better when I wear an abaya because I feel it shows respect to their cultural values and helps me blend in. Finally, if I'm not sure whether my clothing is appropriate or not, wearing the abaya over it covers everything. As for men, Saudi men normally wear a thobe and shemach. Foreign men usually wear a suit or at least a button down collared shirt with dress pants and dress shoes. Please note that formal dress is necessary to enter any government offices in Saudi Arabia. If you're wearing shorts, chances are you won't be allowed entry, so please save yourself the trouble and dress formally when you go out. Now on to number two, is it safe? Despite what you may have heard in the news, Saudi Arabia is a very safe country. There have been countless stories of people leaving their personal belongings unattended in public places and nobody touches them. It's very rare that you'll have your things stolen if you leave them sitting out in the open. In fact, there is very little crime in all of Saudi Arabia. Saudi ranked in the top 10 of the Gallup Law and Order Index and ranked among the top three safest places in the world by the Institute for Environment and Human Security at the UN University. And don't believe it if you've heard that it's not safe for women. Saudi Arabia is one of the safest places in the world for women with strong rules and protection laws in place. Personally, I have never once felt unsafe as a woman there. Speaking of gender, this brings me to the next question. Number three. Can I talk to the opposite gender? Of course you may talk to the opposite gender. The thing is to just respect that invisible boundary that exists between you and the other person. I often get asked about greetings, for example. The general rule is that there is no touching, not even a handshake, fist bump, or friendly pat on the shoulder between opposite genders. 
Note that shaking hands is becoming more common, especially with expats. If you're an expat man greeting a Saudi woman, wait to see if she extends her hand. If you're an expat woman greeting a Saudi man, wait to see if he extends his hand. The general rule is that if the other person doesn't extend their hand, don't extend yours. Also, certain topics should be avoided. You should not reveal too much about your personal life back home and refrain from talking about your past relationships, partying, drinking alcohol, or anything else that falls outside the scope of their societal rules. The bottom line is to be respectful and adopt a cordial attitude. The topics that are always safe to talk about with Saudis are the following. Anything about Saudi culture, food and history, family, travel within Saudi and abroad, the Vision 2030, business, entrepreneurship and economic changes, cars, sports, films and free time activities. And for the last gender related question, number four, will I be treated fairly as a woman? Of course you'll be treated fairly and you'll find that you'll actually be treated quite special as a woman in Saudi Arabia. In most public places, there are separate lines for men and women, which means usually you can go through faster. And as an expat woman, you'll find that they'll roll out the red carpet for you. They really want to make sure that you feel comfortable and happy living and working in their country. I have never once felt disrespected while in Saudi Arabia and I was working mostly with Saudi men. My Saudi colleagues and participants in courses that I taught called me sister from day one and they all told me that if I ever needed anything I can call on them at any time and I was sure that if I ever found myself in trouble I could call them at any time of the day or night and they would come running to help me. Finally, just as a side note, I would like to mention that more and more Saudi women are entering the workforce. A BBC News article on February 17, 2022 mentioned that 28,000 Saudi women applied for 30 open positions as a train operator. Also, a couple of weeks ago, I read an article in Arab News which reported that there are currently more female tech startup entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia than in all of Europe. Now on to a different topic. Number five, do I need to speak Arabic to work in Saudi Arabia? No, you don't need to speak Arabic to live and work in Saudi Arabia. Of course, it's always a good idea to learn the language of any local place that you spend some time in because it helps you build bridges with people. But it's certainly not necessary as most Saudis speak excellent English. Especially in global workplaces like multinational companies, international schools and universities, and these international projects that expats typically work in in Saudi Arabia, the official working language is almost always English. For you ambitious people out there who want to learn Arabic, I highly recommend these two resources, italki.com and arabicpod101.com italki is the website that I used to study Arabic for more than four years. My amazing teacher was Mahmoud Asi and I am so grateful to him for teaching me how to read, write and speak Arabic. italki is like a giant global marketplace of language teachers with many options of teachers to choose from and then do live online lessons through Skype, Zoom or other video call method. Studying on italki gives you a lot of flexibility because you have the lessons from the comfort of your own home. For me, it was the best solution. In the beginning, I was taking Arabic lessons in person with a teacher in her home in the evenings, but I found that I was so tired after work that I couldn't really learn that much in that situation italki allowed me the flexibility to have lessons when I felt fresher, for example during lunch breaks or in the morning on the weekends. Plus I saved a lot of time by not having to commute to the teacher's home or a language school. Of course there are obvious benefits and advantages to taking classes in person. It's just about finding what works best for you. Arabic Pod 101 on the other hand is a wonderful website with recorded lessons in Arabic. The wonderful thing about it is that the lessons are short, informative, entertaining and well structured. There are many levels and the method is based on conversations with native Arabic speakers that the teachers then break down for you line by line. Embedded in every lesson is some interesting cultural information and there are written translations of all lessons. They even have a handy app which is what I usually use to study when I'm out taking a walk. Question number six, how can I be respectful of the local culture? 
To be respectful of the local culture, just use your common sense. Keep in mind that cultures are different, and that's what makes the world an interesting and beautiful place. Understand that you are a guest in their country, so there is a kind of unspoken expectation that you will conform to their rules and laws. Of course, Saudis respect expats and their differences. By no means do they expect you to convert to Islam and start praying five times a day. But if you're a manager, you have to keep in mind to allow time for your team to take their prayer breaks during the day, for example. Just keep an open mind and be ready to adapt. Question number seven, can I drive a car? Yes, and as a matter of fact, most expats do get cars when in Saudi Arabia, and it became legal for women to drive on June 24th, my birthday, in 2018 when I was living there. Keep in mind that expats do have to get a Saudi license. Your foreign driver's license is not valid there. Question number eight, why should I go there? Well, I advise you to open your mind and give Saudi a chance simply because the experience will enrich your life in countless ways. Trust me, my experience far exceeded my expectations. What I found was an extremely safe, clean place with welcoming culture, wonderful food, and amazing professional opportunities. Honestly, working there changed my life for the better and I will never be the same. I am so grateful to Saudi for all the professional opportunities I have been given. I worked at the wonderful Kaust, King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, and my original position was a business English instructor for staff. I later ended up starting the cross-cultural training program at the university. The Saudi administration of the university was open enough to let me start teaching this new topic as part of my job. Then, about three years down the road, I started to think that it might be a good idea for a change, so I requested to be moved into a new role. The HR department at Kaust allowed me to move into a new role, which actually I had never done before, but they provided me with all the training that I needed. It was a wonderful professional experience that I can never forget. Question number nine, can I live a normal life there? Saudi Arabia is becoming more and more open and more and more modern. You'll find that Saudi cities are actually quite similar to cities in other parts of the world. You'll find all your familiar and famous international restaurant chains and coffee shops. You'll find comfortable accommodation options and entertainment like spas, beaches, movie theaters, and beautiful resorts. You also have access to all the communication apps you would want to use to stay in touch with people back home. You can speak English in the workplace and you will be respected, praised, and appreciated for the application of your unique talents in Saudi Arabia. And the last question, number 10, can I go there as a tourist? Yes, Saudi Arabia now has a tourist visa option. You can apply for it online through an easy process that takes around 15 minutes. There is also the visa on arrival option, so please check online to see if your country is eligible. Well, that brings me to the end of the 10 questions about Saudi Arabia. You may have been a bit surprised by all the positive responses. I encourage you to go to Saudi Arabia, spend some time there, and see for yourself what a wonderful place it can be to live and work. It just might change your life too. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe to keep getting great videos on expat life, intercultural skills, and business abroad. Bye for now.